Buick. DJ Catalyst. Half hour in there. <laughs> I get a microphone, right? Oh, okay. Yeah, that works. Spectacular. <clears throat> Hi. You weren't expecting fat Rambo, were you? <laughs> no, I, <clears throat> I have a tie around my head because the only context through which I understand the wearing of a tie is like crazy wedding guy from 80s comedies. Like that's the only, I, I don't even know. It goes on your neck, I heard, backstage, no? So, I mean, <clears throat> I thought I should dress up um, and Fat Rambo, Fat Rambo came out. I don't even know, does it go like, do you just this, that, is that it? And then around the... Fat, <laughs> Fat Rambo's so angry, by the way, because does everyone know who Rambo is? Oh, good. I'm always off kilter with my uh, cultural references. Um, Fat Rambo's saying, by the way, he's so angry and he had to go back into Vietnam beca because they ate all the sausage. That's, that's Fat Rambo's thing. Um, you might also notice my mullet. Uh, <laughs> yes, learn it, learn everything about it, understand how it moves, how it thinks, because it is crucial to this entire talk. My wife said, really, you're going up there with that? She, she didn't mind Fat Rambo, by the way. <laughs> um, you're going up there with that? I'm like, trust me, it's all part of it. Um, so I, I'd like to thank Bree and uh, Erica for putting this together, asking me to do it. I guess I was voted to do this, so thank those who voted. Um, but more importantly, thank all of you. Uh, it's, it's a humbling and flattering experience to know that people care what you have to say. I can't even tell you how important that is to me. I mean, I, I teach these classes and people come and go and I try to connect with, with as many of them as I can. And the fact that I can stand in front of a room of people, young people, uh, <coughs> weird people, um, and have, I, in my head, maybe you don't give a shit what I'm talking about, but in my head, I'm like, wow, these people really value what I have to say. If you are ever so lucky to be in front of a group of people who legitimately care about what you think and what you have to say, cherish that for the rest of your life. It is unthinkably awesome for me to be here in front of you. And yes, it's very subtle, Binghamton, extra wide <laughs> podium. I, I get it. I get it. I've put on some weight. <laughs> Who hasn't? No one was born at 180 pounds. We've all put on weight. 
Um, so again, thank every single one of you out there for being here. Um, that being said, I hope you brought a saddle and some spurs because we're about to get on a tangent horse <laughs> that has been locked in the stables and I've been poking it with a stick for like three weeks. <laughs> like no food or water. Just like, listen, tangent horse, we're about to go for a ride. <laughs> Actually, don't. I hope you don't have spurs. Do not anger tangent horse. That's what I'm saying. Saddle, definitely. You're going to want to strap in because we are going to go like this. <laughs> On tangent horse. <laughs> so <clears throat> I'd like to start with a list. Uh, this is, this is uh, I'm sort of projecting onto you. Um, reasons why you think I'm doing this right now. Okay. First one is I'm dying. You think I'm dying, right? <laughs> Everyone in the room is like, oh my God, he might die, like right there. <laughs> Which is odd, because I would think the room would be full. If you knew someone was going to die on the stage, I'm going to go see this guy die. It's just, it's going to be spectacular. Because he'll do it with some flair. Um, I'm not dying, okay? Um, someone get that. I'm not dying, I, I promise, although let, let's be frank, I'm a hoagie away from a heart attack. Um, but there are no hoagies up here, so. We're, well, we're all a few hoagies away from dying, right? That's where this is all headed anyway. But I am not that I know of, I haven't been to a doctor in 13 years. Uh, I am not dying, so please don't applaud or laugh out of sympathy. Okay? Uh, reasons why you think I'm doing this. I'm leaving Binghamton. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. It's the only place that will have me, trust me. <laughs> I've somehow been able to, like they let me teach students. Do you realize what I'm talking, like, do you not see what I look like? Like, I, I don't wear this on a normal day. This has buttons. <laughs> I love this school. I love the students. I love the community. I live in Endicott. Um, I would, it is in my best interest not to leave here. How would I, I I'd have to explain so much if I was teaching somewhere else. <laughs> What's the course? Gaming is literature? Okay, yeah, that's not going to happen. <laughs> Reasons why you think I'm doing this. I won the worst contest ever. <laughs> if there were a contest and the, the, the prize was, first prize, do what is the number one most feared thing by human beings. Speak in front of them. Uh, I, I would not enter into a contest like that. So no, I did not win a contest. Based on the flyer that you saw on Facebook and whatnot, you think that this is some kind of magic show. Um, <laughs> if, if, for those of you who didn't see it, it's a picture of me in a tuxedo, like, doing this pose <laughs> full of wonder. Um, but if, if you did think this was a magic show, it begs the question, like, why are you going to a magic show? Like, please, <laughs> if you th are here under the impression that I'm going to do magic, I would ask that you leave, because <laughs> that's just embarrassing. Um, actually, that picture is from uh, Giddy Up, Tangent Horse. <laughs> uh, and every time, and this is, uh, this is awesome for all of you, because you guys, most of you students are at an age where in a couple years, all your friends are going to start getting married. And in the span of about four years, you'll go to a thousand weddings, and you will be bored to death. So what I always do is I pick, I design a pose and give it like a, a backstory so that every picture of me the entire weekend is in this pose. That was, <laughs> that was one of the poses. It was called The Magician. It was. So I have literally a hundred pictures of all the bride, the groom, the parents of the groom, every on the dance floor, and I'm just like, whoa. 
I even invented a drink called the Magician, which is Pepsi with a watermelon rind in it. And by the end of the wedding, we go to the bar and be like, yeah, give me a Magician. He's like, all right, yeah, cool. <laughs> it's so much fun. There have been so many that I don't really need to go into them now. But the Magician, there was like guns blazing. There was like, uh, I can't remember. There's literally like 15. But you have to give it a whole backstory and have like catchphrases. I was all like, ka kapow <clears throat> Reasons you think I'm doing this. Community service. <laughs> Which is, it's I'm like, if there, <laughs> it's this new law where if you like fart in an elevator, they give you, then you gotta talk in front of some people. It's not real harsh or anything. You don't go to prison, but just like, they can write you up for that. So, sort of a, an easy punishment. Um, someone way better canceled at the last minute. Uh, that is not true either. Like I said, you chose me in some odd way. You guys chose me. Um, and the last reason you think I'm doing this is I lost a bet. Uh, no. Like I said before, I love doing this. Um, the haircut, maybe. I kind of did lose a bet on the haircut. I got the mullet for Relay for Life when they raised $40,000 or something crazy like that. Uh, mullets for cancer, right? I mean... They ask, hey, why don't you shave your head for cancer? I'm like, it's been done. <laughs> Who can't do that? I'm like, let's go mullets for cancer. It's way funnier. <clears throat> so now that we're clear on why this is all happening and um, my, my, wife isn't, my, my wife wasn't going to come because she thought I was going to die on the stage. Like... The total reason to come, she was not going to come. Um, I'm supposed to inspire you. Uh, and it, it's interesting to me because for a room full of 20-somethings, like, wh why? Why aren't you already inspired? <laughs> I mean, you're 20. Like, you can do anything you want. Um, but I, I wanted to break the, the talk down into a couple of areas. So the, the, first, the first thing I'm going to go into a little bit is um, being undefinable, okay? I just stepped out here and you saw what I look like. My, one of my objectives every day I get up is to not be like any other person in the world. I'm, I don't know if I'm accomplishing that. I haven't met them all. <laughs> but it is a conscious goal of mine to never be like anybody else. It's almost prohibitive. Some days I can't leave the house because I'm like, I saw someone with those shoes on once. <laughs> but it, can, it doesn't have to be as manic and weird as that. Um, I would urge you to be undefinable. And in this culture that we currently live in, all people are trying to do is define you. They're trying to close you into some little safe little box that they can process and understand and be comfortable with and push away. You need to fight that at every turn, every single turn. Don't let people define you. I had a friend in college who always had a guitar with him, right? And after his first freshman year, it got old, admittedly. You, you all know that jackass. Um, <laughs> But he was like, now when people see me without the guitar, hey, where's your guitar? Like, it's not like a part of my body. I, I can leave it at home. Like when you get into ruts and you stop thinking, how can I, how can I, how can I be different today? You become easily definable. And when you're definable, you're easily dismissed as an entity. I don't know if that makes any sense. But um, a lot of things I say don't make any sense. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> um, but what, what being undefinable, in your quest to be undefinable, you will sort of, you'll break out, like, like what's so limiting in our culture is expectations. People expect so much out of you people. And expectations and when you, when you seek to be different and when you seek to be undefinable, 
right? You can't, no one knows what to, there's nothing better than not knowing what to expect. It's such an awesome feeling. Like, I hope there's a lot of you here tonight who are like, I don't know what's going to happen tonight. Because you know what? That's what I said <laughs> back there five minutes ago. Yes, it can fall flat on its face, but that's how you learn is to, you have to break free of all definitions. Like, okay, so look at me again, all right? Try to define me, right? You can't do it. You can't do it, let me put it this way, you can do it all you want, but you can't write me off as something that you've seen before, right? <laughs> Remember, they let me teach students here. I look like a redneck investment banker basketball player. <laughs> I told you, the, the mullet is crucial to every point. The mullet is a metaphor for everything I'm going to say tonight. <clears throat> and, and in my world, all you need is a button down to be an investment banker. Yes, that is true. <laughs> That's as much as I know about that. Um, but... <clears throat> And I'm, I'm going to sort of ruin the whole speech right now by giving you the secret early. You're not I'm never supposed to do that. Save it till the end. But I'm going to tell you the meaning of life. I'm going to tell it to you right now, straight up. No, this isn't. <laughs> this is totally not the funny part. <laughs> the meaning of life is to have a complete and intimate understanding of yourself. That's it. It's so easy to know yourself. And it, it's easy in theory. Now, for you, it's difficult. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, MySpace, Friendster. <laughs> like, just the internet. Let's just put it that way. The internet, Facebook, and, and the social media largely invested in convincing you that you're someone you're not. I mean, think about your Facebook statuses. Oh, man, it took me 30 minutes to write that status about, you yeah, going to the gym. It's like, <laughs> what? Why? Why? But the pictures, your pictures. Oh, do not tag me in that one. D-tag. <laughs> right? or take it down altogether. Your profile picture, everything is perfectly articulated to shape this person, this being that doesn't exist. It doesn't exist, that's not you. It might be pieces of you, but it's all a wall, right? You don't understand, I'm not accusing you, but I don't think your generation understands yourself, self-awareness. It will set you free. If you understand intimately who you are, when you look in that mirror, oh, you know, no fear. No fear is such a ridiculous marketing campaign on such a beautiful idea. No fear, such a beautiful idea. You've seen the stickers around, always on the back of some idiot's F-150 pickup truck <laughs> with a gun rack. And like those huge, like, metal balls that hang down <laughs> off the tailgate. No fear. Or it's on some idiot skateboard at a skate park, just like dicking around with a skate. Like, yeah, no fear. No fear is about skateboarding. No, no fear is about looking in the mirror and not being afraid. And I look in the mirror every day, and I have several reasons to be afraid to do that. <laughs> but I look in that mirror, and whatever it is I see, whatever shape I've taken that day, <laughs> I'm like, this is it. This is what I don't deny myself that. I don't dress to please somebody else. I never, that, those processes don't even go through my mind. I'm not, I, I, Every time I'm talking about me tonight, don't think I'm bragging. Um, but I do feel like I've found the secret. The meaning to life is knowing yourself. And I would urge all of you to look at yourself. Okay, know yourself. Here's how I know myself. I talk to myself 
nonstop. And you, you think, oh, he talks to himself when no one's around, and he just kind of in his head does this and kind of does this. Like, no, 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 no. Just like this, right? If there were a microphone in my house, I would talk into it as if there were other people there. I sit on the toilet at night. All right, what do we got this week? This is why, this out loud. Like, that's how, and my parents used to listen outside the bed when I was five. I had all these little imaginary friends around. It's like, hey, what's up? Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. It's, it's kind of a dick. Like, I totally get it. And they'd sit outside the door and just listen to me do this. I never stopped. I talk to myself constantly. If you see me walking around campus and my lips are moving, I do not have a Bluetooth headset. <laughs> I am talking to no one but myself and answering myself. And I, I work through the most difficult problems that way because I, I understand me. And I know, you know, it's, it seems like such an easy concept, like I said, but you have to fight the media. I talk about the media a lot, but you have to, the media constantly wants to tell you you're not good enough. You need this thing. You need that thing. You need a shake weight. Like, what? What? <laughs> Don't get me wrong. I have a shake weight. <laughs> but it's, it's for ironic purposes, trust me. It's, for, it's, it's to say, <laughs> look, I have a, we have one. Right? Ha <laughs> ha. Shit, you know. But like those, the media, our culture is constantly telling you that you're not doing it right. You're totally doing it right. You just got to, you understand, understand this. Um, and I, I feel like I have an understanding of this and it helps me to be uh, who I am. It helps me to come out here and not care, really. I mean, you guys are going to leave here and you're going to think, However, however many different things about what just happened, hopefully it's all good. But I can't control that. All I can control is this and this. So be undefinable. You know, defy expectations. Um, and as you're seeking that, you'll, I think you'll find yourself more accepting of other people. Because that's another media sort of cultural thing is that we push away difference. Oh, I, I don't want to, that's different. That guy's black. That's weird. Is there a black guy over there? <laughs> you know. That guy's gay. Ew. Like that's what, when you, but when you're seeking to be different, you're seeking to be undefinable, you're more accepting of things that are different and things that are um, less definable. It'll be, a, it's a better culture if we all know ourselves. Um, you know, our, 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 these things shouldn't define us. Our race, our sexuality, our gender, our language. People say, you know, I teach here and I have a, I have a horrible, horrible gutter mouth. It's awful. But it doesn't define me. I've had this argument with my mother who's sitting over there a million times. Like, mom, you know I'm not a murderer, right? Not going to hell because I said shit. <laughs> like, hell is reserved for the worst people Hitler and like a backstreet boy. Like, that's who's. <laughs> and that's the kind of stuff. That's the kind of stuff you have to do to go to hell. Mom. <laughs> a student just asked me recently, within like a week. He said, how did you get to where you are by being you? <laughs> Which is such a, I mean, it's sort of a backhanded compliment, I guess. Um, how did you get to where you are, meaning have a job, I guess. How did you get a job and a wife and a house and children by being you? It just does not compute to me. And I told him, and I, in all honesty, I said, Listen, if you're, the quicker you can understand yourself, I know what I do, but I know I do, do well, I know what I do poorly, I know, uh, I know as much about me as I can, um, and I'm honest with myself, too. That's a big part of it. 
Um, you can't fool yourself into thinking you're something you're not. I am fat right now. You know, I am six foot nothing, 280 and nothing. Um, so, uh, what was I saying? <laughs> oh, how'd you get a job by being you? I said, well, the sooner you find out who you are, the meaning of life, and you understand that intimately, the, the, the quicker you can get into being you. Does that make sense? So I've been this way so long that the world's divided into two people. People who are like, oh, that's Vaughn. He could do whatever the hell he wants. And the people are like, ew, that guy's weird. I'm out. Like, I don't, and for me, I'm like, I don't want to have anything to do with the people who think I'm weird or obnoxious or fat or smelly or any other of the list of adjectives uh, that people can use to define me. So once you get comfortable with yourself and you, you live that every single day, people, people are going to react to it. They're going to be like, oh my God, that guy is awesome. Or that guy sucks. And that's it. What, what is in between? Eh, I kind of like him. This is, don't do that either. <laughs> so this brings us to this, the, the second list, which is ways in which I could be defined, okay? That I try to, there's a, there's a long list, <clears throat> but these are ways in which I could be defined. Subtly hefty, <laughs> which is a term I prefer. It's much better than obese. Guy who sleeps in public a lot. <laughs> I can fall asleep anywhere, literally. I sleep in my car more than hobos sleep in cars. <laughs> and it's funny because you could, you could, like, I've slept on park benches. Let's take the park bench, for example. I've sl I fall, fall asleep on a park bench now and again. <laughs> and the rea this, this boggles my mind. The reaction you get when falling asleep in public is worse than the reaction you would get if you just did heroin in public. <laughs> People walk by and like, they like, oh, what are you doing? Like if someone was shooting heroin on a park bench, you would just be like, okay, I don't want to have anything. You would do nothing about that person. Okay, let him go. He's on an interesting trip. <laughs> Guy just peacefully sleeping. It's not like I'm snoring, and like taking my clothes off. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just doing one of these, you know, where you're just half, you're just in between, you're just kind of like, what? Whoa, this thing moves. <laughs> Anger, people will get angry. What do you, how can you sleep at a time like this? I'm like, what? <laughs> I don't. I'll never get it, but it won't stop me from sleeping in public. <laughs> Please don't disturb me. That's what I'm asking. Ways I could be defined. Disturbingly passionate. I'm extremely passionate about what I do. I hope that comes through a little. Um, surprisingly agile for someone his weight. <laughs> a militant lesbian. Yeah. <laughs> you were all thinking that. You're like, wait, is he a dude? Like, what? <laughs> I totally thought he was. I kid you not, we were at Disney World last year, <laughs> right? And I'm at the pool, shirtless. Why? Why? Two tables over, there's like these two women eating lunch, two tables over. And I hear the one, there's one with her back to me and one is facing me. The one with her back to me, I hear her clear as day say, I wish that lesbian would eat with her shirt on. <laughs> yeah. So, I got that vibe going out there, I guess. <laughs> I 
like so convincing a lesbian that she thought I was a naked lesbian, like, <laughs> like right down to the breasts. I, so convincing. <clears throat> Ways I could be defined. A poor man's Jack Black. <laughs> An even poorer man's Zach Galifianakis. <laughs> Almost prohibitively sarcastic, which is something I, uh, I wear on my sleeve, typically, um, and I'm trying to impart to my three children. Sarcasm is my favorite thing in the world. It is so poignant. I enjoy it tremendously, and I am, the irony is I am not being sarcastic right now. Deceptively brilliant for someone his weight. Someone's special friend. This black guy over here is just killing me. I literally, people have thought that I'm retarded. And I don't, I don't use, I'm not using that word pejoratively. Uh, we were at, it was a party, we were in college, and I was, I had a bag of pretzels <laughs> and a package of hot dogs. <laughs> so it's like a big house party. So I, I'm like, hey, let's play the lava game. Do you guys know the lava game? It's where you can't touch the ground ever. You have to move about the house on furniture and lamps and like such. Let's play lava. No, of course. <laughs> A stern no from everyone I asked. All right, I'm playing lava. So I'm, I'm all, I mean, I'm all up and down the walls with the hot dogs and the pretzels. And I'm doing one of these. Fiesta! Right? That means party in Spanish. It's totally appropriate. <laughs> Fiesta! And there was this group of girls there who like knew my friends but didn't know me because we went to different schools. And they were over in the corner like, what is going on with this guy? <laughs> and they bring my, two of my buddies aside like, um, is he retarded? <laughs> And like, again, not pejoratively at all. You should, in fact, back to my don't be definable, be undefinable, you should, you should pray to the high heavens that someone thinks you're retarded. <laughs> Seriously, that means you're doing your job. Do you understand how that's not mean to retarded people? Do you understand that? That's what I mean. Like, you should embrace that kind of uh, that kind of uh, specialness, that kind of difference. Fiesta, by all means. <laughs> Ways I could be defined, still more. Incorrigible, absolutely. I would not deny that one. A Weisenheimer or a whippersnapper, that's just old people. Old people would call me that. <laughs> and extremely loving for someone of his weight. Speaking of love, I love comedy. I love humor. I love laughter. I love being funny, or at least trying to be funny. It's always an attempt, yes? Um, it's the most meaningful thing in my life. And before you go, well, what about your family? And what about your... Just shut up. <laughs> As concepts go... It is the most meaningful thing in my life, is, is the, the exploration of comedy and humor and what it can afford. If you've taken my class, you know this. Every class I teach is based on figuring things out through comedy. There's no reason that you can't. But people, I think um, the majority of people, um, they step away from that. Oh, comedy is dumb. It's, it's, it's sophomoric. It's infantile. It's just about sex and poop. And <clears throat> which I don't, I don't deny those two things, but um, they are very funny. Um, but what they miss 
is the connection between comedy and thought. Like laughter is the most powerful and intimate expression of love for me. And I say that unwaveringly. That is how I show love. It means if I can make you laugh, consider yourself loved. Because I absolutely uh, value that more than anything. My wife is with me because she makes me laugh. And I can make her laugh way more than she makes me laugh. <laughs> but what people miss is that with humor and comedy, there, you have to think more. Everyone came in here with an expectation. This guy's supposed to be funny, I heard. Or you've had my class, maybe you laughed once or twice. He's kind of a funny guy. You're all sitting out there thinking a little extra harder, just in case there's going to be a joke coming up. You don't want to miss it. Jokes are connections between ideas, between things, between people. You can't get a joke without processing it. And the best comedians and the best comedy and the biggest belly laughs you get are when you make those connections. So to me, humor is thought. It is thinking. I, mean, I, I can't make fun of you without knowing a lot of things about you. Right? I mean, I could try. It would be it would be hollow and shallow. I would make fun of the surface things that I see, like most people do. Your skin color, your sexuality, all those things that we brought up earlier. And that's, that's not funny. What's funny is that connection between the, the joker and the jokey. And I've, again, I value that more than anything. Comedy promotes listening. It promotes understanding. It exists where things are most messed up. Um, I mean, think about The Daily Show and The Colbert Report. Politics. If politics was working and was awesome and everything was functioning properly and bills were getting passed and we had a black president, oh, we do have that, um, we wouldn't need shows like The Daily Show and The Colbert Report and newspapers like The Onion and comedians like Louis C.K. to sort of point it out. Be like, hey, everything's great. I guess my job is done here. So to me, humor, laughter, comedy, and critical thought are one and the same. Um, and you have a choice to interpret your life through that lens. And here's a little story that I always tell. Um, <clears throat> about three young brothers, you know, oh no, that's a Beastie Boys song. Um, <clears throat> this may sound, you just, just go with me. Yeah. Uh, you can, re you, have a, you have the ability, you've been conditioned how to react to things, okay? And there are two ways to react to, to anything. You can react with humor and levity, or you can react sort of with a, a grim sense of impending doom <laughs> and anger and frustration and negativity. Now, look at, take a kid, take my kid. All right, I got three kids. One of them, let's say Cash. Cash is my youngest. And he is seven. But it, this happened with all my kids. <clears throat> let's say Cash is two. And he's kind of, he's still a little wobbly on his legs. We're outside playing in the driveway and he's doing one of these things, running around, look, I can run, yeah, yeah, big deal. Uh, <clears throat> and he bails out and just wipes, scrapes his knee, bumps his head, rolls over on his arm. What does he do? What's the first thing the kid does in that position? Anyone? <laughs> Scream is wrong, whoever said looks up Whoever said looks around is right. Kid, every time, will go, what do, what do I do? <laughs> this kind of hurts, but nothing's broken. Like, this is what's going on in the kid's head. He just has no way to articulate that. So what does he do? He looks to outside stimuli to tell him how to react. He looked to his mother or his father. Dad, help me out. Now, 
normal dad does what? Oh, honey. Oh, are you okay? No. Oh, my God. What happened? Oh, you're so special. Look at you. You fell better than everyone else. Nice job. Like, ah, uh, just a production out of the whole thing. And what does the kid do? Uh, it milks it. Of course you're going to milk that, right? You're going to get a cookie or a treat or something afterwards. Balling. What does number one dad do? Get up. That's it. Get up, Cash. You're not hurt. It's actually pretty funny. <laughs> and what does he do? He's like, yeah, you're right. Just give me a Band-Aid or something. He comes over, and we have a laugh. I'm like, nice trip. Have a nice fall. Is that a thing? That's a joke, right? <laughs> it's a good two-year-old joke. Um, but it starts there. Like, right there, that moment, that kid is being conditioned into how to react. I understand, like, it's sort of an oxymoron to think that you can choose how to react. Reacting is involuntary. But I think for the most part, you can. And in our culture now, we decide very quickly we've been conditioned to react negatively to a lot of things. Um, when you could just as easily spin it the other way. It's just we haven't been conditioned to do that. Um, and I think a more concentrated effort to be more comedic, to seek laughter. It's, I mean, it's awesome. Who doesn't love to laugh? It's the best medicine. Right, guys? It's, laughter's the best medicine. I mean, Jesus. Oh, Christ. <laughs> so, right. so how can you connect like, for, for laymen, you need, to con you need to convince people that humor is thought and humor is thinking. So I always, there's another great story that you'll love. It's about exercise. I'm sure a lot of you have heard it. To me, learning is like exercise. It's awful, <laughs> right? It's dreadful. Like how you've all been in classes where you're like, oh my God, I should have brought a pistol. But you're learning! Yay! It's torture. Exercise is the same thing. Going to the gym to get on the thing that moves you artificially. Elliptical, stair, machine, whatever. I don't even know the names of them. It's how long it's been since I've exercised. Um, treadmill, that's one. Uh, and what do they do? What do they do on a treadmill? They put shitty TBS sitcoms on for you. It's like, oh yeah, I, anything but exercising, right? So if I exercise, and this is my, this is one of my theories. If I exercise, all I'm thinking about is how much I'm exercising. It's like, yep, that's all you can think about is here I am exercising. That's exactly what I'm doing right now. But if I play basketball, yes? I do, yes. I don't know why I posed that rhetorical question. <laughs> if I play basketball, I could play basketball all day. I would need some breaks in between. But if I play, I could play basketball all day. Why? Because I'm thinking about dunking on this chump. <laughs> I'm thinking about crossing up this kid. And like hitting a fall away three. That's what I'm thinking about. I'm thinking about not falling down. I'm thinking about scoring. I'm thinking about playing defense. I'm thinking about uh, catching the ball. There's any number of distractions in the way of me thinking about, hey, good thing I'm getting this exercise. Dunk. <laughs> so learning and comedy are the same way. Learning sucks. <laughs> so, When you make it funny, you're not thinking about the information that you're being given, right? The learning is a byproduct of the laughter and the comedy and trying to pay attention enough to make the connections between the two. Like, no, I mean, you can't, <clears throat> 
exercise and, and learning are, are the same. Like, no, but no one wants to be fat and stupid. Like, you have to do one of them. <laughs> so why not do at least one of them in the, in the way where it's most accessible? and it's most retainable, and it's most enjoyable. You should, in thinking is awesome. You can think anything. Right now, right now, right now, think anything. Anything, go. Oh yeah, pretty cool, huh? <laughs> thinking is spectacular, but no one thinks anymore. Nobody. You think for, three hours before a test, and then you shit it out on the paper, and then you forget it forever, <laughs> right? Thinking is awesome. Laughing is awesome. Why would you not put those two things together? Peanut butter, jelly, other things that go together. <laughs> Seriously, I can't think of two things that go together right now. Cake and ice cream. Thinking and laughing, oh, <laughs> why not? Why not, I ask you? Because people don't get it. And it goes back to point one. People don't trust themselves. Um, so I make fun of, and that's another thing, in class, I'll get, I'll get loose with somebody. They'll say something stupid. I'll tear them up a little bit, but like, obviously, they deserved it. But I'm saying, like, you have to understand, I said this before, I, I really only make fun of the people that I care for tremendously. You stupid, ugly audience. <laughs> See what I did there? No? It's true. Everyone's like, and I had my best friend, my best friend in the world. He's from Long Island. He's from, he's from Merrick. Long Island. Represent? No, don't do that. <laughs> and we met like the first week of school. So we're hanging out and I am busting balls hard on him. And he didn't know what to do with it. And he said, he literally said this to me. He goes, where I come from, we don't make fun of our friends. <laughs> and I laughed and laughed and laughed. Because this kid is more sarcastic and more of a dick than I am in real life. And I'm like, to hear him, I didn't know that at the time, but as our friendship grew, I'm like, Do you, I always remind him, hey, don't make fun of your buddies like this. You know. <laughs> it's the most ridiculous statement I've ever heard. And at his wedding, I gave a, a best man speech, and that was the first thing I said. I'm like, guys, I don't know if you know this, but and he's like, oh my God, I said it. <laughs> I said that 15 years ago. That's a, move back to comedy and thinking. Like, I don't forget anything because someday it's going to be funny. <laughs> Seriously, think about your life. The stuff you remember is the stuff that you're like, oh, I'm going to get that guy so bad. <laughs> or the stuff from your childhood that you watched on TV and uh, that kind of stuff that you can cultivate later in life and make this, oh, this beautiful poetic joke. Like that's what you're saving it for. That's, that's thought. That's a process of thought. And it's all for the sake of comedy. Um, <clears throat> so to the next, the next list is, this, these are things that I have done because I thought they would be funny. <laughs> Period. No other motive behind it. Ate a stick of butter. <laughs> Which was, you, you know, you take a bite, and I was like, oh, what, no, why do you do things? And you're like, what? Just like a candy bar. That's what I said. <laughs> Nothing like a candy bar. Zero. Zero. Remember peanut butter and jelly? Not butter, candy bar. No, 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 no. <laughs> Not anything like a candy bar. More like just eating a, a tin of Nagzima. What? Things I've done because I thought they would be funny. Got a tattoo that says nipple with an arrow, <laughs> with an arrow pointing to my nipple. <laughs> it's body labeling. It's all the rage. I don't know. Some, maybe, maybe it'll catch on for you guys. 
took a dump on my front lawn. Yes, applaud that. <laughs> it was at the same party where people thought I was retarded. So, and it wasn't like, oh, I gotta go. It was just like, hey, that would be funny if someone, and I was like, I'm on it, I got it. <laughs> Went to a rodeo. I just thought that would be funny. <laughs> it clearly was not. I grew a mullet. I got a perm about two months ago. I've had cornrows. I've done pretty much everything you can imagine to my hair. Because why not? Right? It's back to know yourself. Like, who cares? Seriously. And everyone's like, it looks bad, right? I'm like, I don't know. I can't see it. People think I walk around like, I have a mullet now. I have a mullet. I'm constantly thinking about it. I forget half the time until it blows in the breeze and I see it. Oh. And I see it in my periphery. My God, like, oh, majestic. Yes. I've done innumerable facial hair experiments, this being the latest, which is called the Fu Chin Chu. <laughs> Forgot I had this on. I got fat on purpose. <laughs> Most people get fat, it's just you, you wake up and you're like, oh man, what, is, what have I been doing with my life? Like that's when it starts. No, me and my buddy in college were like, you wanna get fat? Absolutely. <laughs> and a high five and we were on our way. <laughs> Domino's had the $5 large pie deal. So we did that a lot. And by the end of the semester, we could each eat two larges in a sitting. I was fat, I tell you. <laughs> Which is largely why I look the way I do now. Great decision. <clears throat> Went shirtless an entire weekend, calling it Shirtless Weekend. <laughs> Which basically was trying to get into restaurants without a shirt. That was it. Getting tossed out quickly. Uh, eaten way more than I should have, clearly. Um, farted during sex. Who hasn't? Uh, Show of hands? Show of hands on that? No? I'm doing a project. It would help me if I got the results. So just one? Okay. <laughs> Program the song Smokin' by Boston on a jukebox 30 times in a row <laughs> at a crowded bar in Syracuse. Ah, oh, delightful. And I'm angry because this, if you know the comedian John Mulaney, he does it the same, he does a bit, that's this, and I'm like, ah, oh, I did that. He stole it from me. Oh, it's hilarious. Because about, at about the fifth time, people are angry at you. <laughs> but they don't know. I was standing by the jukebox, people going like, really? Like, is that the only song they're like flipping through? <laughs> hilarious. I left a particularly impressive dump in a public toilet with a sign on it that said, do not flush, just pay your respects and move on. <laughs> hey, you wanna talk about art? I can talk about art, <laughs> all right? I, the physics of it, I can't even get into. I answered the phone by saying, hello, is John there? <laughs> Two, three, four. You'll get one in every 10. Hello, is John there? N no, no. <laughs> uh, oh, hello? <laughs> Someone will panic. One out of 10 will just panic. <laughs> if they call you and you say, hello, is John there? Bought and used a jock strap. Does everyone know what that is? 
this old school old jock strap is just like it's like underwear with just the balls part <laughs> and then like a huge band and like straps that attach the band to the ball part it's it's from another generation but like I grew up at a time when in in high school your coach thought you should have a jock strap and as a as a 16 year old you're like what is a jock strap so there was this real awkward moment like yeah where are your jock straps and like uh you, you, although it's basically underwear you can take a dump in because there's nothing there <laughs> you don't have to pull down told my wife to have only the words, you are here, on my tombstone. <laughs> Get it? Because you're... <laughs> so, to my last point. Uh, my last point is about caring versus not caring. Um, and I've talked about it a little bit before. I've said it. Like, I literally don't care what people think of me. Um, and I think in a lot, of, a lot of situations that people respect that more than anything. I would respect someone who's doing something differently or uh, who looks differently if they're owning it and living it instead of trying to be, fit into some category that... Uh, some sort of mainstream idea of what they need to be, whether they're black or gay or a male or a female or Asian or, or Mexican. I'm trying to get all of them. Uh, Asian, Mexican, European, Australian, uh, Ecuadorian. It's important to say all of them so you don't look like a racist. Uh, uh, Brazilian, Puerto Rican, uh, Hawaiian, uh, Canadian, and uh, white people. Um, <clears throat> but there's a, in this culture, again, we care about all the wrong things. We care so much about what we look like. Like, really? Like, that just doesn't, that doesn't compute to me. And it's so artificial, it's so superficial to care about, well, what, what about, I mean, yeah, okay. Look nice, I guess. But even that, like, who really cares? You don't have to explain to anybody why you're wearing what you're wearing. We care about Dwayne The Rock Johnson. I, I do, I, I don't know, maybe, maybe we, maybe the collective we doesn't care about The Rock, but they should. But I'm saying, like, we fixate on all these things that don't, des don't even deserve our care when the things that really matter just sort of go uncared for. The, your words. Like, people don't care about what they say anymore. Like, they don't put any thought into it. Like, that's, words are so awesome. I said sarcasm was awesome before. What other things are awesome that you've learned tonight? Laughter is awesome. Words are awesome. Do anything with your words. No one cares about what they say, how people talk. No one cares about what people believe, right? I care about, and I, this sounds so disingenuous and cheesy when I say it, but I say it to every class I teach. I care about what every single one of you believes. I care about it. Why would you not? You can, you can offer me as much as I can offer you. But a lot of people don't care. I mean, pe kids come to class and they, they you know, they, they sit there and they, you know, they sort of pay attention or fall asleep or whatever. Whatever happens, they look at porn. I don't know. Um, <laughs> and some students uh, just, they come and go. Like, I don't understand. Like, why would you not, like, put everything you have into this opportunity? Um, these are the things you need to care about. Not, oh, my God, like... What am I going to wear tonight? Like, did you hear what he said about me? I'm sorry to do a feminine voice with that. I know I'm gender stereotyping, but that was a guy that I was doing. His name was Rick. And Rick could not believe what that girl was saying about him. I'm sorry. Um, but, like, it's, it's about priorities. Like, what do you really care about? Like, those are the things you've got to chase, 
not these stupid things like, oh, does, does this match this? You know, do, do I, you know, what's on, what's on Facebook and who's, <clears throat> you know, who's cool now and who's not and, and this person uh, was saying this about, like all that bullshit that sort of swirls around makes your life way more complicated than it has to be. That's the stuff that sort of gets you off track and gets you into um, caring about the wrong things. Um, again, no fear, right? Look in that mirror and have no fear about what's looking back at you. Um, that's what you should care about. Those are the things that will make you into a, a better person um, and a way more interesting person. Um, it, it, it's hard for me to sort of articulate um, this last point, but you know, it, it, I always think it must suck trying to be the best at looking like everybody else. Like it's, there's a, and you know a lot of people like that. They're the, they're the best at being the same. Like being the same is just such a low bar to set for yourself. Again, we're back to undefinable. Make people look at you and be like, I cannot figure that person out. Holy shit, what was that? <laughs> I cannot figure him out. Like that's, that's something to be almost respected. Um, leave your mark. Like whatever you do. If it's throwing hot dogs and pretzels and yelling fiesta, I guarantee you, I guarantee you, those people will never forget me. <laughs> those four girls who were in the corner being the best at looking like every other girl I ever met in my life, going like, yeah, that's, that guy's weird. I don't want to be like around him. What if he hits me with one of those hot dogs? <laughs> Like, I want that. I totally want that. And I will smack you in the face with a hot dog. <laughs> Whatever you do, leave something behind. And that sounds like you're just taking a dump on a lawn. It's not what I mean. Make people remember you. I always say that at the end of of classes at the end of the semester and here we are you know we're two days away from the end and how many seniors we got in here a lot yeah like I always my my hope like if someone if you've taken my class my hope is that you look back in 10 years and you'll be like remember that one class we took that's it that's all I care about if you're just thinking about that in 10 years, be like, that was awesome. Like, I've done my job, right? I, I, and I believe that to the bitter end. It's like, if you can leave a mark and make people remember you, like, that should be one of your goals. That's what you should care about. Leave a mark, whether it's something as stupid as, um, as what I was talking about before with the hot dogs in the face and all that kind of stuff, which is fun. Um, or it's something bigger. Like, you have, to, you have to have that sort of out in front of you. Um, you know, our culture would be a much better place if we were more comfortable with who we are. And that is true. I see it every single day. Every single day with students. Some just are just like, just dr you're just drifting. It's fine. You're in your 20s. You're not supposed to know what you're doing. Um, you have plenty of time to figure that out. But I'm saying, do it non-traditionally. Be undefinable um, and work towards leaving a mark. And hopefully the best way to leave a mark is through humor. So think about that. <clears throat> and here's the final list. And this is about leaving your mark. Everyone should have, you should go home and make this list. So if you want, I'll, I'll say the title really slowly. If you want to write it down and go home and make your own list that's similar, please do. It, we could change the world with this room right now. The list is called, Things I Want to Have People Say Whenever I Leave a Room. Okay? Things you want to have people say, and as you, I mean, it, uh, it will be so much fun for you. 
Every time you're in a classroom or at a party or something, you're working towards making someone say this thing, okay? <clears throat> when you leave. Things I want to have people say when I leave a room. This is my list. I don't think I've ever seen anyone look better in overalls. <laughs> I should have worn overalls tonight. It would have, I would have checked one off, I'm sure. Second thing, do you think he was being serious? <laughs> that one I've already checked off a million times. A million times. <laughs> this one's good. This one's good. What's that smell? <laughs> oh my God, open a window or something. It's like Cool Ranch Doritos mixed with hot butt. <laughs> what? You think it smells like hot, wet cheese? What difference does it make if the cheese is wet? I'll give you hot cheese, maybe. No, I don't have any Febreze on me. Who carries Febreze on their person at all times? A cleaning lady? Well, well okay. Maybe a cleaning lady, but if your cleaning lady is just Febrezing the shit out of things, you're not getting your money's worth. It's going to take some work. <laughs> Things I want to have people say when I leave a room. I just can't seem to figure that guy out. I got that one too. <laughs> Another one. Finally, now we can talk about something other than professional wrestling. And the last, the last one and my last words for this evening, um, but before I do this one, um, again, uh, from the bottom of my admittedly clogged heart, um, this, just that you are sitting in a room makes me tear up. I'm flattered, humbled, honored to be able to talk to you in this way, and I hope that in some way you'll take something out of here, even if it is, you know, the list of things you want people to say. Um, I appreciate it. Um, I'm forever indebted to all of you and all of my students that I've had. Um, I honestly believe I was put on this planet to do what I'm doing. Not this, but teaching. Um, and I hope that you feel that every single class that you show up to. Um, and that's, again, we're back to be, you know, know yourself. Figure out why you're here. It's the meaning of life. The last thing I want to have people say when I leave a room is you might not want to sit there. <laughs> Thank you. What? Encore? Thanks, guys. I don't wear roses. <laughs> this is what I would look like at graduate. I don't, I never. Everyone's like, where are your robes? I'm like, I, I, what? I don't have, I don't have any sort of robes, but thank you, Bree. I'm, uh, I'm oddly speechless. Um, I will definitely wear these with a t-shirt at, and I'll be at graduation, so hopefully find me and we can do a whole weird, awkward hug, handshake thing and, and go on with your lives. See ya. <laughs> so
so yep. when I go to his classes, it's something for everyone, you know? It's just like, you go in, you sit down, you laugh a little, you learn a little bit, and then you want to cry. And that's fun. I like Ryan Vaughn.